Hopefully you recently have been learning about the diffraction of light as it passes through an aperture. Uh, a not so good byproduct of this is that uh, when you have two point sources of light that are diffracting as they go through a light source, some of those diffraction patterns will start to overlap and you will not be able to resolve the two point sources. I mean you can't tell that it's two things you're looking at. And so this phenomenon of resolution is what we are going to discuss in this video. Now, let's say we've got something like a camera that's going to take a picture of something crazy far away, like a couple stars. Now, you're probably going to have a very small slit in your camera or aperture or opening, small enough that it's comparable enough to the size of the wavelength that diffraction becomes something you cannot ignore. So let's say that we've got two stars out here, and uh, here's a star, here's another star, and the light coming in from one star is going to go through the aperture over to here. This is my screen over here. And from the other star, also goes through the aperture over to here onto the screen. Now what I can say is that if this is my screen and if this is the intensity of light on the horizontal axis here, I'm going to get that same single slit diffraction pattern that we saw before from one of those stars. Now the other star will also give me a diffraction pattern that gets smaller and looks like this. And So you can see that these diffraction patterns will start to overlap. If they overlap too much, you can't see on your screen or on your film a difference between the two images and they blur together as one, which is bad. Now, if these two stars over here, the star here and the star here, if they were farther apart, then these diffraction patterns would get pushed farther apart and you wouldn't have the overlapping and maybe the images wouldn't blend together. So if we look at the next page, these diffraction patterns can be spread out or closer together and determine whether or not they are blending together so much that we cannot resolve or see that it's actually two stars, we use what we call the Raleigh criterion, which is named after Lord Raleigh, who I assume was a lord because his parents were lords, I don't know. But anyway, he came up with this idea that said, if the diffraction patterns coming from two point sources, maybe you're looking at through a camera, are so far away that the overlap is not so big, meaning that you've got a huge dip in intensities before that. Um, this is what we would call well resolved. And you can tell that your point sources are two different things. If they start to come together in this pattern, where you just barely get a dip in intensity by adding together the resulting diffraction patterns, we're going to call this just resolved. And if they're overlapping so much that they just blend together into a blur, as you see by this green hump here, we are going to call that not resolved. Now, for the Raleigh criterion, that's going to the magic one is this one here. And we're, they're going to be just resolved when the maximum of the central diffraction uh, pattern, or the central fringe, lines up just on top of the first dark fringe. And the same thing happens over here. The brightest spot lines up right on top of the first minimum there. That is our Raleigh criterion. And here it is written out. Uh, write this down, memorize it that. The Raleigh criterion says they're just resolvable when the center of the diffraction pattern of one source is directly over the first minimum pattern of the other source. Now the actual angle at which all of this awesomeness is going to happen at for just resolved is what we have here, where theta is equal to lambda, which is the wavelength, divided by b, which is the, which is the slit width. Now, uh, if that angle gets bigger and the two point sources are getting farther apart, that's good. That's easier to resolve. So we can say here that if theta becomes greater than wavelength, oh, so then you get this, and they are resolved. If it's equal to, you get this, that's your just resolved, and if 
they get closer together. That means the angle is steeper. They're harder to resolve. The angle is less than lambda over b, and you cannot resolve them. And you would be sad. You just get one blur. Keep in mind, this should be a familiar equation because for single slit diffraction, if you're trying to find the minimums in single slit diffraction, you'd be using this equation here, where n is 1 for the first minimum, 2 for the second minimum, etc., etc. You might be thinking most cameras don't have rectangular slits, which is true. They have circular apertures, in which case you won't get the just simple bands that we saw. Instead, you will get uh, what are these circular diffraction patterns. A single point source gives you just a bullseye type situation, but if you have two point sources, you're going to start having overlapping bullseyes, and here they're going to be very hard to determine that it's two point sources because they look almost on top of each other. The equation for the Raleigh criterion for just resolved is going to be almost the same, except it's 1.22 lambda over b. Uh, and for single slit diffraction, uh, you would use the same type of equation for your first minimums. So they would be at 1.22 and end up over B. Here is a problem with the telescope, and you want to find out if these are resolvable. Pause it, see what you can do with this problem. I think it helps to draw a picture. So you've got a telescope, which is going to have a circular aperture, which means you have to use that 1.22 situation. And one object is going to be 10 kilometers or 10,000 meters away. And it's going to be separated, by, this is going to be exaggerated, one centimeter or 0 0.01 meters. Think of this as a right triangle with your adjacent side and your hypotenuse side, or opposite side, and you want to find out what the angle of separation is. You should be able to do that. Without even a calculator, hopefully, you can set up that tangent of theta is going to be your opposite over adjacent, 0.01 meters divided by 10,000, you're going to get a crazy small angle. It turns out I didn't even have to use inverse tangent to solve this, because by small angle appreciation, Tangent theta is the same thing as uh, theta, so it just ends up being that. Now, let's find out what the Raleigh angle is going to be by using theta equal to 1.22 lambda over b. Here, I filled in what the Raleigh criterion was. Notice I used the 1.22 because it's a circular aperture as most everything that you would use in real life probably would be and you end up with the Raleigh angle for just being resolved 4 times 10 to the negative 6. We look back at the actual angular separation and it's less so we can say that since that angular separation is less than the Raleigh criterion it's too close. They're gonna be a blur and they are not resolved.